Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. I am James. This is a new series in EU4 Mew in Texas. We're going to play as Fars. I'll just go over this really quickly, get this out of the way. As the Timurid Empire's borders recede, I don't think the uh, Timurid Empire was here yet, but okay. A number of regional magnates and tribal chiefs see their opportunity to carve out states for themselves. In Anatolia and Syria, this vacuum has been filled by the Ottomans and the Mamluks, the old regional powers in this area. In this uncertain political situation, tensions are on the rise between the old sedentary cultures of the region and many Turkic tribes that dominate its military and political life. Many of the Turkomen tribes have started to turn to millen millenarian sects such as the Safawiya, a development that might well reshape the future of the region completely religion we start as sunni government were monarchy and there is an environment all right so starting as far as we're going to form the persian nation Which, if I'm seeing this correctly, is actually not that many territories. Looks like it's just an area around here. So I'm going to form the Persian nation first, but since this is such a small amount of territory, even the historical Persian nation from the Safavids still is only about this area, and then it comes over here a little bit. So I'm going to try to do these historical Sassanid territories, which are everything in the Persian Empire, which is this area. And then it extends about to right here. And then I think it goes up to Georgia and all these little countries up here. That's the main area of the Sassanid Empire, but they did expand during a during a war with the Romans, and they were able to conquer Egypt, Syria, and a good bit of Anatolia. So I think I'm going to go for that as kind of a uh, long-term goal. So first forming Persia, the borders of Persia, and then expanding into that. And if I actually am able to do that, then I'll probably try to do the Achaemenid Empire, and that is uh, all of Anatolia. And then some Greek areas, plus everything that I said before. I believe there's also, for the Sassanids, they had territory in Arabia. I think there's a little bit of Yemen down here and this area. And then, of course, I'm thinking I might grab some colonies from India, just ahistorically, just to, to pull that Indian trade over here and get really rich. So I know there is an event to switch to Zoroastrian. I think it's random, though. So if that comes along, I'll do it. If it doesn't, uh, I'll probably just stay Sunni. Maybe go Shia. I'm not entirely sure. But that's... Uh, I'll cross that if I never go Zoroastrian, and then it's like 1,500. Alright, so Fars. Our ruler is uh, Shah Mubariz ad Din Muhammad Muzaffarin. He's a 434. He is greedy, national tax modifier negative 10%, yearly prestige negative 0.1, and he is strict, so we get a little bit of discipline boost. Our heir is Abul Fawaris Jamal Muzaffarin. He's a 334, temperate, national unrest, yearly prestige. I'm going to set my national focus to mill. More on that later. So Fars has these two. I think that's actually just specific on my ruler right now. Cruel. Fars has this constant feuding. It adds national unrest plus three, stability increase interval plus fifteen percent, and monthly autonomy change plus point zero three. This is because of the ruling dynasty Muzaffarids. So if we can get rid of the Muzaffarids, then we would lose constant feuding. 
So it's pretty much in your best interests if you're going to play Fars to lose your current dynasty to get rid of this. You can actually get rid of it through decision, but that's actually pretty far into the game. If I can find it, is it here somewhere? Might show up later. I think it's like 30, you need like 30, 20 or 30 centralization, you need, your ruler has to have a certain admin skill. Pretty much it's not something that's going to happen within the first 50 years. Plentiful manpower and kingdom are the other two, and then cruel, I think this is just for our ruler. Because it expires on ruler death, I'm not sure if your next ruler would get this, but this gives national unrest plus two. Tolerance of heretics and heathens minus one, and some extra national tax. I do know that when your ruler dies in, with Fars, I believe there's events that cause your nation to splinter because of his your current ruler's children fighting each other. So I think they carve out areas, and you have to fight them to get your territory back. So it's almost like Crusader Kings in that you lose a bunch of territory and you have to fight your siblings to get it back. Let's see, tech... Tech 5, we start with leadership ideas, so that's why I went national... Uh, mill focus to finish out leadership ideas. I'll probably just keep this. Leadership's not bad. Plus it'll give me an extra siege pip early on, which is always good. Our missions, go ahead and take that one. These pretty much just give a bunch of claims on territories. They want you to form basic Persia. Not uh, hugely unique missions, pretty much just claims as I said. Iranian ideas, I skipped this. Uh, let's go, it's the familial system is endogamous communitarian family. Gives hostile attrition plus 1%, monthly war exhaustion negative 0 0.01. A little bit of global spy defense, 10%. Nationalism minus 5, a little bit of a stability increase threshold, which seems a common theme with FARS, plus 15%. And global institution spread, negative 10%. Bonus ideas, Persia Highlands. Fort defense plus 2.5%, which isn't particularly a lot. So that's kind of bad. Language of court, culture, trade. A little bit of yearly prestige. Diplomatic reputation, plus 0.5. Institution embracement cost, negative 5%. Global institution spread, plus 5%. So this one, uh, that global institution spread, pretty much has this negative institution spread from the familial system. Cavalry and bowmasters. Cavalry combat ability, plus 5%. Land attrition, negative 2.5%. And army tradition from battles, plus 25%. Shahanshah, king of kings, income for vassals, plus 10%. Admin tech cost, negative 5%. Persian architecture, a little bit of construction cost, negative 5%. National unrest, negative 0.5. That'll come in handy. And uh, production efficiency, plus 10%. The last one is improved Silk Road. Global trade power, plus 10%. So these are actually pretty good good ideas overall, I'd say. Uh, probably in that... Uh, better than most, I'd say. This could be probably like 5% at least. Just double that. Although Persia's actually in uh, mountainous territory, so I'm sure most of their territories here have good fort defense because of the mountains. Speaking of which, the mountains make uh, fars really bad for autonomy. So I think I'm going to do bureaucracy probably as my second or third idea. Maybe trade as my second one. I think that's going to uh, come in handy. Roads, capitals, bureaucracy, removing privileges can pretty much get this down and you pretty much have to because every country is every province is pretty much rugged it 
it's really bad. It's all hills, mountains, deserts. I don't we don't start with a single flat province. There is the uh, government reforms, so tradition is uh, competitive inheritance, which gives chance of new air, 100%. Yearly corruption plus 0.1 and maximum centralization plus 5. The power structure is delegated rulers, state maintenance negative 30%, core creation cost negative 10%, and monthly autonomy change plus 0.1. There is a roving court that we could switch to, which gives a little bit of national unrest, negative 2, stability increase interval, negative 10%, income for vassals, plus 10%, and maximum centralization, negative 10. I think I'll just keep delegated rulers, because I like having maximum centralization, because we'll have to centralize in order to reduce autonomy. And also state maintenance and core creation cost is nice. We can't do bureaucracy, because we have to embrace meritocracy, and I'm not sure I've ever embraced meritocracy. Maybe once or twice, it just hardly ever happens. The ruling class is what we want to look at here. So our current reform is hereditary elites, which gives stability increase interval negative 10%, yearly, legi yearly legitimacy plus 0.1, and monthly autonomy change plus one, 0.1, which that monthly autonomy change, I think for FARS is killer, so there is this one, Appointed Elite, which gives monthly autonomy change negative 0.1. I'm just going to immediately switch to that. That is a 0.2 monthly autonomy change swing, which I think for FARS is huge. There's also a Wealthy Elite that we could have switched to, tech cost negative 10%, your le yearly legitimacy. It's hard for me to say. Negative 0.1 and maximum centralization negative 10, but like the other one, I don't want that negative maximum centralization, so I wouldn't do that one. Military elite increases national unrest, which is not good for us, because we're going to have a lot of that. And then uh, a little bit of morale of armies, national manpower modifier regiment costs plus 10%, and maximum centralization plus 5. So yeah, points in elite is what I went with there. Policies, we're going to centralize, mediate internal disputes, and aggressive policing. So we start off with zero centralization, which is also why the autonomy is so bad. So it's going to be a slow climb to centralize. This is actually not that bad, since we do start with a ton of negative unrest. Granted, I would have liked to have started with some, but uh, it's not that horrible since we don't get that negative unrest from a higher centralization. We do start at war with FARS. But we've pretty much won it because we've occupied Isfahan. So we can go ahead and take Isfahan and have them revoke their cores. And that'll give us extra prestige, 7.3 prestige, 18 ducats, and Isfahan itself. First, let's do our allies. Shirvan, I'm gonna ally Shirvan. And I'm going to improve relations with the retinids. I'll collect, collect trade in the Strait of Hormuz, which I probably want to conquer this node as quickly as possible to get those ducats. And I'll transfer from Kutch. We have two transport ships. I 
I think I'll keep those ships for now, actually. I'll just reduce Navy maintenance. I'm going to need those ships if I want to take provinces over here. Granted, I probably don't want to take provinces over there until I get ports. But I'll keep the ships for now, anyway. We'll go ahead and send this peace deal. Welcome to Mew and Taxes 2.5. Default without additional tags, fistful of tags, and for a few tags more. We'll do for a few tags more. Alright, that's going to be it for this episode. We'll continue this in the next episode. Pretty much the main focus will be on the Chupanids trying to get their territories through those events that happened with the White Horde and the Jalarids. So that'll probably be in the next episode. So thank you for watching, and goodbye.